part five. Uh, if you want part one, it's up there. Part three was interesting. In listening to it, it's like I don't necessarily agree with everything I said, but it was what I said, and so it uh, it's something for me to reflect on. Do I really think that? Do I really believe that about myself, about the world, about Jesus? <laughs> I mean, it's interesting examining, I mean, from like a, a black book's point of view, this, this whole chicken philosophy thing is, uh, reminds me of the black books and just how kind of messy it is and slapdash and then to be analyzed and interpreted and boiled down alchemical processes and all that good stuff. So, yeah, anyway, so just know that I'm second guessing one or two of the, the things that I stated there, but I also stated that this isn't like, um, I am saying this all as fact, in my opinion, it was just literally the words that were pouring out of my brain as I was laying on that pillow after five hours sleep. And by the way, I got sick right after that. So that's always a fun uh, moment in life is when you go to a mall. Actually, I went and did the driver's test, which involved a lot of standing in the sun in sector 21. Sounds like something out of Hunger Games, right? A lot of like dust and concrete and cows and uh, you know, then there in the middle of it all, this automated track, standing in the sun, waiting for my turn, and this problem, that problem, and uh, kind of feeling a little bit of a fever coming on. But then I really wanted to go to the mall and film uh, part three. And so I did that and then, and then got five hours sleep and couldn't sleep. Probably partly because I, there was some kind of like 24 hour flu coming on and I didn't quite realize it at the moment, but I, I was interpreting it as that I was like in mental turmoil about the Arbitel and about how I might be perceived for reading the Arbitel. Weird stuff, weird stuff. And then, uh, so yeah, so I recorded that whole thing where I was laying down and free associating about the war in the Middle East and among other things. <sighs> yeah, just know that I don't necessarily agree with everything I said. I'm going to go ahead and continue reading this though. I'm sure you're super interested in this. As I've mentioned before, I'm approaching this as best I can from the standpoint of like assuming nobody's gonna watch it. And just kind of trying to organize my thoughts about this in preparation for an esoteric nerd episode, episode with Joe. Yesterday I felt better than the day before, and today I feel better than that, but I'm still, I'm still coming out of it. So I'm a little bit, uh, what is this angle, I look like a racer head. It's kind of, I kind of like it. All right. The most general precepts of this secret. One, every governor acteth with all his spirits, either naturally, to wit, always after the same manner, or otherwise of their own free will, if God hinder them not. Okay. Two, every governor is able to do all things which are done naturally in a long time, out of manner prepared, before prepared, and also to do them suddenly, out of matter not before prepared, as Och, the prince of solar things, prepareth gold in the mountains in a long time. Oh, he's the one doing that, okay. In a less time, by the chemical art, and magically, in a moment. Three, 
The true and divine magician may use all the creatures of God and offices of the governors of the world at his own free will, for that the governors of the world are obedient unto them, and come when they are called, and do execute their commands, but God is the author thereof, as Joshua caused the sun to stand still, still in heaven. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, the fact that like this is associated with the kind of magic that I like still to one degree or another stand by is like embarrassing. Um, and I, I freely say that and admit that because I am not like trying to, um, well, that's beyond your grade, my way into maintaining a sense of, well, maybe they do turn lead into gold. If so, why are they struggling to pay the rent? My way into um, maintaining an egregore or whatever. I'm not involved in that. And you could say, you know, oh, well, yeah, I mean, by you, I mean, that particular you, I mean, people presently in orders um, could say, well, he's an ex-member. See, this is what happens when you break your oath and stop coming every Saturday and Sunday and Wednesday and Friday and doing all your rituals every morning. This is what becomes of you. You end up bitter and critical of sacred things. That's what, for you others, that's what some of the folk in the cults think. I love my hair today. It's like totally, I haven't done anything except put a shirt on today. I'm just like barely able to do this. So I decided to go ahead and do it because I kind of, I don't know, I want to. Maybe it's compulsive. Uh, they tend, they send some of their spirits to the mean magicians, and that's mean with a capital M. So maybe it's like mean girls. No, I have no idea. Which do obey them only, only, in some determinate business, but they hear not the false magicians. So mean magicians is different from false magicians. All right. But expose them to the deceits of the devils and cast them into diverse dangers. Spelled divers without the E. This is like not spell checked from the 1655 translation. So it's like Shakespearean a little bit. By the command of God, when they say thou, they don't mean to sound old timey. They're literally saying thou because that's a part of their daily vocabulary. By the command of God, as the prophet Jeremiah testifieth, in his eighth chapter concerning the Jews. The prophet Jeremiah. It's okay for him to say it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I have a close relative. Those who know me well know that know who I'm talking about because I only have one close relative who donates to the IDF. And I'm sorry on behalf of my blood but I have to confess and admit that that's probably the real reason that I'm silent on the issue. Because I don't want to alienate that person who at times in my life I've had a shaky relationship with, but for the past six years that I've been in India, it's been only positive. And I just, I don't want to hurt that person's feelings. So I have a very personal, selfish reason for remaining silent on the issue. And when I listened to the previous episode and I was like seemingly playing the, well, there's, there's good and bad people on both sides approach. Uh, given what's happening right now, it's like, yeah, yeah, they hit first, but they're pulverizing the living fuck out of them now and it's like right yeah I know I've heard all of the arguments I've heard them all and the arguments for the pulverizers 
are not very good. And most of the arguments in support of those being pulverized are, are sound, not all of them. All right, there's my qualifier about what I said last time. <clears throat> that's not what I was gonna say though. Yeah, the whole thing about these spirits, and that's kind of what was, I mean, it was a, a, like a general sense that like when you mess with these spirits or even the, the quote unquote regular planetary spirits, like, um, you know, uh, Sorath and uh, Ketamel and uh, them, that if you're not like 100% truly in line with your holy and divine higher self, then just calling on their names, you're fucking yourself because they're gonna be like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll do your bidding, but in a way you don't like, and then also I'm gonna go ahead and kick you in the eye, you know? So it takes a person who's entirely deluded about their relationship with the divine to approach these with confidence. And I have been that fool. All right, four. In all, in all the elements, there are the seven governors with their hosts who do move with the equal motion of the firmament. Ooh. Sorry about, I, I was like laying on my back and like moving my knees from side to side, like doing like light twist stretches on my back, but it looked really weird. <laughs> and I couldn't actually see my face that whole time because I had like a, an incense box sticking out from a table with my computer holding one end of it down and then the, the phone set on the other end. So I could see the top of my head and, the, and my chest, but I couldn't see my face. So I didn't know how weird it looked. <laughs> all right. Anyway, sorry, I'm jumping all over the place here. Um, in all, I already said this, but I'm gonna read it again. The motion of the firmament and the inferiors do always depend upon the superiors as is taught in philosophy. All right, five. A man that is a true magician is brought forth a magician from his mother's womb. Well, I can uh, testify to that. Others who do not, who do give themselves to this office are unhappy, spelled U-N-H-A-P-P-I-E, which is funny to me. That is that which John the Baptist speak of. No man can do anything of himself except it be given him from above. Every character given from a spirit for what Uh, maybe I don't know I, I think that like that's like weird I mean because the context was the the king was gonna cut off his head he said I have the power to cut off your head and he said you've been given no power that wasn't given to you from above which is kind of like whoa you know like I'm I'm speaking on behalf of the God that gave you the ability to cut off my head so if you cut off my head it's because the god that I am serving wants you to cut off my head. It's like a very specific particular thing. But you can take any line of scripture and use it however you can strain your brain into cramming it in Mr. Paracelsus or whoever Swiss guy decided to compile this work of literature. Alright. <clears throat> Every character given from a spirit for what cause soever hath his Efficaki in this business for which it is given in the time prefixed, but it is to be used the same day and planetary hour wherein it is given. God liveth and thy soul liveth. Keep thy covenant and thou hast whatsoever the spirit shall reveal unto thee in God, because all things shall be done which the Spirit promiseth thee. All right. That was the aphorism 
17. We just finished it, the one that we started at the beginning of the previous episode, and that I interrupted with an hour of rambling. Now, aphorism 18. There are other names of the Olympic spirits delivered by others, but they only are effectual, which are delivered to anyone by the spirit, the revealer, visible or invisible, and they are delivered to everyone as they are predestined. Therefore, they are called constellations. And they seldom have any efficacy above 40 years. So if you're reading this after 1610, never mind, all right. <clears throat> therefore, therefore, it is most safe for the young practicers of art that they do work by the offices of the spirits alone without their names, and if they are preordained to attain the art of magic, the other parts of this art will offer themselves unto them of their own accord. Pray, therefore, for a constant faith, and God will bring to pass all things in due season. All right. Don't listen to anything I say, including what I just said. Aphorism 19. Olympus and the inhabitants thereof do of their own accord offer themselves to men in the forms of spirits and are ready to perform their offices for them whether they will or not. By how much the rather will they attend you if they are desired? But there do appear also evil spirits and destroyers. That reminds me of uh, when I was working at Screen Actors Guild and my manager commanded me to go to McDonald's and get sausage, sausage McMuffins with cheese. So I obeyed her command, but more than willingly, you know what I'm saying? Because I was gonna be eating some of them. All right, anyway, um, <clears throat> but there do also appear, appear also evil spirits and destroyers, which is caused by the envy and malice of the devil. See, this is where it's kind of like, if you don't buy any of it, then why be interested in it? But if you do buy any of it, still, why be interested? It's sort of like, you know, hey, why don't you go downtown and, you know, walk around in the crowd and, uh, you know, there's some cool, cool cats and uh, also some criminals with knives. Good luck, you know, pray to Jesus. It's like, maybe I'll just stay home. Never mind, you know, I mean, you know, like that's not the specific reason why why I've never been interested in these things but perhaps part of why anyway um yes 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 mm -hmm. which is caused by the envy and malice of the devil and because men do allure and draw them unto themselves with their sin as a punishment due to sinners Whatsoever therefore desireth familiarity to have a conversation with spirits, let him keep himself from enormous sins, and diligently pray to the Most High to be his keeper, and he shall break through all the snares and impediments of the devil, and let him apply himself to the service of God, and he will give him an increase in wisdom. Aphorism 20, all things are possible to them that believe them and are willing to receive them, but to the incredulous and unwilling, all things are impossible. There is uh, no greater hindrance than a wavering mind, with an E at the end, levity, oh, don't be, don't laugh and tell jokes. Uh, 
unconstancy, foolish babbling, that's me, drunkenness. I haven't really been drunk lately, but I have been drunk. Oh, believe you me. Fuck. Lusts? I don't know what that word means. And disobedience to the word of God. It depends on how you define word of God. A magician, therefore, ought to be a man that is godly, honest, constant in his words and deeds, having a firm faith toward God, prudent, and covetous of nothing but of wisdom about divine things. Well, depending on how you define most of those words, that's me. Aphorism 21. When you would call any of the... I love this. <laughs> when you would call any of the Olympic spirits, observe the rising of the sun that day. And of what nature the spirit... of what, See, when Joe was telling me, he read this before I did, because he's one of these, like, people who went to college and everything. Um... Yeah, he was telling me that it basically says all you have to do is be pious and pray and love God and the spirits will obey you. And that that's all you have to do. And I was, I, so I went on and 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 on in a reply before having read this about how, yeah, astrology is for losers. You know? like, who cares about the planetary hour? Just pray, you know? Like, no, I totally resonate with that. And then now reading it, I'm like, no, it's saying to do it on the planetary hour. All right. All right. Anyway, if you're in the vault, there's no time. It's fucking. Anyway. Uh, yes, the rising of the sun. And of what nature the spirit is which you desire. And saying the prayer following, your desires shall be perfected. Omnipotent and eternal God who has ordained the whole... Oh, I just started reading it and already my desires are like... Sorry. Omnipotent and eternal God who has ordained the whole creation for thy praise and glory and for the salvation of man, I beseech thee that thou wouldst send thy spirit an end of the solar order who shall inform and teach me those things which I shall ask of him, or that he may bring me medicine against my dropsy? <laughs> Hang on, I gotta find out. You don't mind, do you? You can uh, amuse yourself while I... Dropsy, I've heard it before, but it, it's like an old word for something. Is it tuberculosis or something? Dropsy. What is the meaning of dropsy? An old term. Hmm? Oh, okay. And we're back. Uh, dropsy. An old term for the swelling of soft tissues due to the accumulation of excess water. In years gone by, a person might have been said to have dropsy. Today, one would be more descriptive and specify the cause. Thus, the person might have edema due to congestive heart failure. Oh, that was what my dad had. So my dad died of dropsy. That's fun. I mean, obviously not really. Being facetious, being having levity, no levity. All right, where was I? Yes, yes, the drop save. Um, did I, I completely lost my place. Jesus Christ, all things are possible to them that believe them. Foolish babbling, yeah, we read all that. Oh, okay, I think we're here. Yes, yes. Um, right, thou shalt... The spirit above, nevertheless, thy will be. Okay, against the drops. We're still in the middle of the prayer. All right, the dropsy, etc. 
is the ampersand with a C after it. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but thine, through Jesus Christ, thy only begotten Son, our Lord. Amen. So, if God wills that I have dropsy, then what the fuck, God? You know, like, <laughs> sorry. Um, but thou shalt not detain the spirit above a full hour. Right? Unless he be familiarly addicted unto thee. Alright. For as much as thou camest in peace, Um, or the whole pie, if you're, never mind. And for as much as thou camest in peace and quietly, don't want to wake up anyone, uh, and hast answered unto my petitions, I give thanks unto God. In whole name thou camest, in whose name? Whole name? In whole name. All right. I think that's a typo. Um, and now thou mayest depart in peace unto thy orders and return to me again when I shall call thee by thy name or by thy order or by thy office, which is granted from the Creator. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Be not rash with thy mouth, neither let thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God, for God is in heaven and thou in earth. Therefore let thy words be few, for a dream cameth, cometh excuse me, through the multitude of business. It's business. It's business time. What page was what on who? We were doing six pages a day, and I'm on page 21. All right. Um, the fourth septenary, aphorism 22, we call that a secret, which no man can attain unto by human industry, without revelation, which science lieth obscured, hidden by God and the creature, which nevertheless he doth permit to be revealed by spirits, to a due use of the thing itself. And these secrets are either concerning things divine, natural, or human. But thou mayest examine a few, and the most select which thou wilt commend with many more. Aphorism 23. Make a beginning of the nature of the secret, either by a spirit in the form of a person, or by virtues separate either in humane organs, human organs, or by what manner soever the same may be affected, and this being known, require of a spirit which knoweth that art, that he would briefly declare unto thee whatsoever that secret is, and pray unto God that he would inspire thee with his grace, thereby thou mayest bring the secret, thank you, uh, to the secret to the end thou desireth, for the praise and glory of God, and the prophet of thy neighbor. Aphorism 24. The greatest secrets are number seven. One, the first is the curing of all diseases in the space of seven days, either by character or by natural things, or by the superior spirits with the divine assistance. Two, the second is to be able to prolong life to whatsoever age we please. I say, a corporal and natural life. Three, the third is to have the obedience of the creatures of the elements which are in the forms of personal spirits, also of pygmies, 
Sagami nymphs, dryads, and spirits of the woods. The four. The fourth is to be able to discourse with knowledge and understanding of all things visible and invisible, and to understand the power of everything, and to what it belongeth. Five. The fifth is that a man be able to govern himself according to that end for which God hath appointed him. Six. The sixth is to know God and Christ and his Holy Spirit. This is the perfection of the microcosmos. Seven. The seventh to be regenerate as Hanochius, the king of the inferior world. These seven secrets, a man of an honest and constant mind, may learn of the spirits without any offense to God. The mean secrets are likewise seven in number. One, the first is the transmutation of metals, which is vulgarly called alchemy. Vulgarly called alchemy. <laughs> which, certainly, I mean, it's got Allah in the prefix, so of course this Swiss Catholic guy in the 1500s, but never mind, which certainly is given to very few. Zero is very few. No, actually it's not. Those are two different things. So, well, very few. Where are we? Yes, the transmutation of metals, right which certainly is given to very few, but, and not but of special grace. Two, the second is the curing of diseases with metals, either by the magnetic virtues of precious stones, or by the use of the philosopher's stone and the like. The third is to be able to perform astronomical and mathematical miracles, such as hydraulic engines, to administer business by the influence of heaven and things which are of the like sort. The fourth is to perform, to perform the works of natural magic of what sort soever they be. The fifth is to know all physical secrets. The sixth is to know the foundations of all arts which are exercised with the hands and offices of the body. The seventh is to know the foundation of all arts which are exercised by the angelical nature of man. All right, I'm going to finish this aphorism and then call it a, an episode. <clears throat> the, secret, the lesser secrets are seven. One, the first is to do a thing diligently and to gather together much money. Two, the second is to ascend from a mean state to dignities and honors and to establish a newer family, which may be illustrious and do great things. Three, the third is to excel in military affairs and happily to achieve to great things and to be an head of the head of kings and princes. I wonder if these like seven are in order by planet. Probably, I would imagine. Four, to be a good housekeeper, both in the country and city. Five, the fifth is to be an industrious, fortunate merchant. Six, to be a philosopher, mathematician, and physician, according to Aristotle, Plato, Ptolemy, Euclides, Hippocrates, and Galen. You ever heard of Plato, Aristotle, Socrates? Morons. Sorry. Good movie. Seven to be a to be a divine according to the Bible and schools, spelled S C H O O L E S. This sixteenth, this fifteenth, seventeenth century translator really ought to have gone to one. Then he'd know how to spell it. Just kidding. I'm sure that that was accurate back then. 
which all writers of divinity, both old and new, have taught. All right, so there you have what I read today for episode four, five, episode five of Chicken Philosophy, The Arbitel. And yeah. All right. I guess that's it. So, um, until next time. Oh, the sun. Oh, you want to see it? You can't see it, can you? I'll go ahead and bid you a heartfelt birthday.